Hey friend, John McLennan here, and in this video, I wanna share with you some tips for unlocking Chuck Berry's guitar style. I'm gonna talk about his rhythm playing and his lead playing, and these guitar parts are so fun to play. I'm really excited to show you this. So let's get straight into it here. Now the first thing you'll often notice with Chuck Berry's rhythm is that he tended to not play, you know, like a traditional sort of strumming along to songs with open chords. Like if you had a song in the key of A and you played an A chord like this, what he would do instead is he would actually use blues rhythm patterns. So instead of playing that A, he might play something like this. And what that is there is just taking two strings from that A chord. So here's your A chord. We're going to play the open fifth string. And then I just use my index finger on the second fret of the fourth string. And we're going to play those two notes twice then reach up with the ring finger and play the fourth fret on the fourth string. Just play that note there once or strum once with the fourth fret down and then come back. So it's gonna go. And it's based off that A chord, right? So we, we have the A shape there, just two notes of it. We're making a power chord. This is like a root and then a fifth and then a root sixth and we just go back and forth like this. Now, often he would play these with down strums and use a straight eighth note rhythm. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, and this really comes out of the blues. You know, you've got this sort of pattern in tons of classic blues songs. But again, the rhythm was changed just slightly to more straight eighth notes instead of swinging them. So that's the first tip I wanna give you and I'm gonna walk you through a bunch more rhythm and lead parts. But real quick, to help you put this together anywhere on the neck, I wanna give you my free fretboard guide. And this is a PDF that shows you the five chords and scales that I use to map out the entire fretboard. And this is so useful if you want to learn the knack and you want to learn songs faster, you want to solo, you want to play double stops and cool rhythms. This is really going to help you out. Just go to johnmclennan.com slash fretboard guide and you can grab that as my gift to you. So hope you enjoy that. With that said, let's dive into the next part. So what you'll want to do from there is you'll want to find a way to play this anywhere on the neck and, and make it movable. So let's say that we played this bar chord here at the fifth fret, five, seven, seven, six, five, five. This is like an A major bar chord here. Now you could take just this note and this note of that, and that's actually the same as open A and then the second fret there. So just playing it now, on all fretted notes as opposed to having the open string in there. And then you reach up with your pinky and you've got the, you know, the fifth fret, the seventh fret, and then the ninth fret you can play. So what that gives you is now a movable pattern that you can play in any key. Now, Chuck Berry, let's say he was doing this instead of in the key of A, maybe B flat, like of course the classic, you know, Johnny Be Good. Then you would place that pattern there on the sixth fret. Now, another really cool thing he would do is, is slide into that. So, like that. So I'm playing let's say I wanted to get to the sixth fret here with my index finger, I would start one fret below and then just scoop into the chord. And it adds a little bit of tension and then release, but it's a lot of fun to play like this. One, two, three, four. So rhythmically there, I'm sliding into one, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one. So that's a little move you can add that just embellish the embellishes the chords. So from there, you can shift down to E flat. So we've got E flat here. 
just bringing that shape down one string basically so sixth fret on the on the fifth string and then eighth fret on the fourth string okay and you can do this same thing now you've got it for e flat now i like to think about bar chord shapes being associated with these rhythm parts so for example we have this shape here that bar chord for this now here you've got e flat and then you've got this right so you can move that also up to f and you basically have your one four and five so you can use this and this became the basis for so many rock and roll songs and tons of players that Chuck Berry influenced in rock and roll. And we can see that it all, it just goes back to the blues. So beyond this, you've got, you know, your shuffle patterns and your sort of driving rock rhythm parts like that. But Chuck Berry also had a lot of really cool chords and some more sophisticated chords and sounds that I think he got from players like T-Bone Walker and, you know, jazz musicians as well. So one of those chords is this shape here, check this out. And this is the opening to no particular place to go. It's actually a D augmented chord, and this is just played on the top four strings. Uh, 12 here on the fourth string, then 11, 11, and then 10. And that's four strings there. Sometimes you could just play the top three strings, I like to add this bass note in there. Get a nice full sounding chord there. And that's the type of chord you might hear like at the top of Stormy Monday, you know? Right, that sort of classic blues sound that leads you into, you know, in no particular place to go, you go into the G rhythm pattern there, so. So that's more of the sophisticated side of Chuck Berry's playing that you can add to your rhythms as well. Now from there, let's talk a little bit about double stops and Chuck Berry used these in his guitar playing all over the place. Here's an example of a lick that does that in the key of B flat. So we'll go back here to this shape. So I'm playing that rhythm pattern there, six and eight. Reaching up with the pinky, one and two and three and four and one. And then I'm sliding here into the 10th fret on the third string and the ninth fret on the second string. Then I walk down, eight and eight, six and six, and then eight on the fourth string, so. So one and two and three and four and one, two and a three and a four and one and two. Some triplets there. And that's really coming out of this chord B flat seven here. And that's a very common, and sound you hear in the blues all the time. It's, it's like a turnaround lick or you can use that in your solos. Here's another one that goes a little bit higher. Again, it will stay in the key of B flat. This goes. So here I'm sliding into six and six on the second and first strings. Okay, and that's coming off of this chord. For those of you that are in my Caged Guitar System course on my website, you'll recognize this shape here as you know the E shape bar chord there, and we're just playing two notes of it. And Chuck Berry did that all the time, like in, in Johnny Be Good. Now here in this one, we're gonna go one and two and three and four. So that ends the same way, eight and eight, six and six, and then eight on the fourth string. It's 
fun to play some rhythm and then go to the licks like that and then bounce back and forth, but keep the beat going. Here's another one, again, coming off this same B flat chord, it sounds like this. And this is something I call a repetitive figure. And Barry would do this, he would just lock into a lick and repeat it over and over. It's, it's a lot of fun. Here we've got the sixth fret again. Those are all eighth notes. One and two and three. Then on the and of three, we'll walk down to eight and eight. Six and six, this time we'll hammer with that middle finger to the seventh fret on the third string. And then the eighth fret on the fourth string. And he would often just repeat that, and then you can even make it shorter and just take the last part of it. So you could go like. Right, and you're sort of ramping up the energy by locking into this riff, repeating it over and over, and then even cutting it up shorter, it, it feels like it, it gets going faster and faster. So I couldn't finish this lesson without giving you one final lick here, and this is called the duck walk lick. I call it the duck walk lick. It uses some quick staccato bends and some double stops like this. So we're in the key of B flat here. We're bending up that eighth fret on the third string, and that's the staccato bend. So you, you, you bend it up and then you, you get off the note. So you do that with resting with the strum hand and also resting with the fretting hand. But you don't want to hear it go. You don't want to hear it come back down. You just want to hear it like go up and then get off the note. So then you play six on the second string. Okay. And we're just going to go back and forth. That's sort of the basic part of the lick. And then sometimes you would add double stops. Like so grab that extra sixth fret on the first string. So that's another one of those repetitive licks where you're just sort of locking into it and building the energy. So take some of these rhythms and some of these licks and work them into your guitar playing. And to help you put this together anywhere on the neck, grab my free fretboard guide PDF. There's a link below this video. It's gonna show you the five must know chords and scales to map out your entire fretboard. It's so useful. You can get it completely for free as my gift to you. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening, and for more Chuck Berry, check out this video next.